Hi, and welcome to the next edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and with me today is somebody who I've known for a very long time, um, and he went all the way from Sea Caucus as a youth baseball player all the way to the major leagues and uh, pitched with both the Toronto Blue Jays and with the Anaheim Angels. And it's my friend, Mark Lukashevich, who I got to cover a lot during his high school days. So, Mark, thank you so very much for joining me today. And uh, and how you been? Good to talk to you again. It's great talking to you as well, Jim. It's been a long time. And like you said, we've known each other for, for a long, long time. But it's... Uh, uh, it's great connecting with you again and having a chance to talk to you on the show. Thank you very much. Well, here, here goes. We're going to give the the uh, maybe the uh, abridged version of the entire Mark Lukashevich story. But my my first memory of seeing the name Lukashevich was in the NJSIA North Jersey Section One Group Three State Championship. It was Group Three State Championship back then. Or maybe it was Group Two between Sparta and Sea Caucus, and the Sea Caucus team had a, a pair of twin brothers with the last name of Lukashevitz. And I said to myself, "Wow, I got to learn how to spell this." And I even made made a joke with Tony Falco. I said, "How am I going to spell this name?" And then he even said, "Well, you better learn how to spell it now because there's another one that's coming up after them." And I went, "Okay, so I'll remember it now." And sure enough, a couple of years later. Uh, maybe it was only a two years later. What's the, how many years difference is there between you and your twin brothers? Oh, there's about an eight, eight year. Oh, is it eight years different? Okay, yeah. so that's you know me. Anybody who's younger than me, I lose <laughs> I lose track of. So, but that was the first time I saw the name, and then you came up, and uh, you just lit it up from the minute you were a freshman. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think it was when you were freshman is when I gave you the nickname of Big Luke, and it's something that stuck. Tremendously, everybody started calling you that because of something I wrote in the Hudson Dispatch way back when. But um, let's go back to a little bit. What was it about? And obviously, you played all three sports as a, as a little kid. What was it about baseball that stuck with you that made you want to uh, focus on being a baseball player? Uh, I just think it just for me it just became natural. I mean, I played multiple sports as a kid, you know, football, basketball, baseball, but there was something about baseball that just became really natural to me and I had a I had just a passion for it. I really loved playing the game and you know, it was one of those things when you're a kid you just you know, as as, as every kid you're going outside and you wanna play with your friends and play and catch with your dad, but uh, I just remember that was the one sport that I couldn't wait for my dad to get home every day and I'm like, Dad, let's get out in the street and let's play catch and you know, throw him the ball and it was just something I just I had a, a focus for it like no, like no other sport that I that I played before that. Wow! But you also correct me if I'm wrong. By the time you got to high school, you did still play basketball, correct too, right? I did. I played a little, a little bit of basketball, a little bit of football, and then uh, eventually I just decided that I just wanted to, to stick with with baseball. Uh, but I did I did play a little bit of uh, all three sports all throughout high school. Okay. And did baseball just come the easiest to you? Was it the most natural of the three? Uh, I would think so. I wasn't the greatest basketball player. Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't read. Yeah, but you were six foot five and, 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 yeah. as a freshman, you know? I mean, to, it's funny. Everybody thinks, you know, because you're tall, you're supposed to be a good basketball player. But I was, I was about average, I would say. But, um, you know, and I, I liked football as a decent football player. But it seemed like baseball was just my, my natural thing. And it just, it just got to be more natural. And uh, obviously being a big lefty and, and playing baseball and being a pitcher, obviously, you know, everybody, you know, wants you to, to, to stick with that sport. So, but it was just something I just felt most comfortable with. See, and the funny part about it is, Mark, is that I don't remember you as a football player at all. Not an ounce. I do remember you as a basketball player, you know, but I do not remember an ounce of you playing football. So anyway, um, talk a little bit about playing uh, playing baseball at Seacoke's Little League, which is a, a storied little league. And, and you had some great coaches and some great people that, that, that helped to teach you. First of all, one of your coaches was your father. And, and how much of an influence was your father on you, uh, growing, you and your brothers growing up? Uh, a huge influence. I mean, it's obviously like like most dads they coach their kids in the league, but 
know, my dad coached my brothers when they were in the league, and then he coached me. And he was a long time little league coach and volunteer for a long time in the in the great Seacorpus Seacorpus little league program, uh, which, by the way, I think has one of the nicest little league fields around. Um, and I, <laughs> which I guess I'm they, a little partial to. But they still do, yeah. It's really beautiful, but you know, my dad not only. Um, taught me the game of baseball, but he taught me the right way to play and, and respecting the game and respecting teammates and the guys you're playing against and uh, just having respect for the game of baseball and doing it the right way and uh, just trying to build character with all the kids that he really he coached. Uh, so he taught me a lot more than just baseball, you know, obviously being a dad, but just uh, as also as a, as a player. Okay. And you also had some great uh, Little League coaches, didn't you? You know, did John Beckner catch, co coach you as well in, in, in Little League somewhere along the line? Who's that? John Beckner? Oh, yeah. John yeah. Beckner, yeah. I mean, Vic Supa. I mean, there were so many great coaches I had all throughout my Little League and high school career. And it was, um, you know, there's so many great people that, uh, that I had, you know, just that helped me along the way um, through my baseball career, whether it be you know, Little League, T-ball, all the way up to the high school, college level. Uh, but, you know, playing playing in Seacaucus at that Little League level was something that was really special. I mean, I'll never forget it. Just, just a great time to be a kid. Okay. And then by the time you got to Seacaucus High School, you were ready. And there was no such thing as freshman ball. There was no such thing as JV ball. You went right to the varsity and right got to play for Tony Falco, who is still the all-time leader in victories at Seacaucus High School. And how much of an influence was Falco on you as, uh, as a baseball player growing up? Um, Coach Falco was a great influence to in me. And he really, you know, coming up as a freshman, and I know, you know, I think he was a little hesitant. And, you know, hey, do I want to push Mark to play at the varsity level as a freshman? I know he's got the ability. But, you know, even when you have the ability, can he handle, handle it mentally at, so, at such a young age? And, you know, I really credit him for believing in me and giving me the opportunity as a freshman to, to not only play on varsity but also to start. Uh, and he put me right in. He threw me right in the fire, man. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, luckily I was able to respond and, and I adjusted really nicely. But, you know, Coach Falco was a huge supporter and he believed in me and he helped me so much throughout my high school career. So I have a lot to thank him for that. All right. And, that, and it would have been very, very easy for a freshman to fail at that time. But you did not. You, you had success right away and you became almost like the talk of the town. Everybody had to go see the big freshman lefty who was throwing for Seacaucus because it draw, drew a lot of attention. It drew a lot of excitement. And you know, was that also an exciting time for you right away too? And the fact that you had, you know, you experienced success right away and you got to know what it was like to, to pitch on a varsity level. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously, playing on the varsity level as, as a freshman, you know, you're excited and you want to prove yourself. And, you know, I just wanted to go out there and, and have fun and play the game. And, and that's really what I did. I didn't try to put any pressure on myself and, you know, kind of laid back kid at that age. And I just went out there and, you know, my dad said, hey, listen, you know, I'll just play the game how you know and then don't, whatever happens, happens. And, you know, luckily when I got to, to that varsity level as a freshman and, and started doing really well uh, very quickly and, um, you know, it adjusted pretty nicely, so it was uh, it was a positive experience. All right, and correct me if I'm wrong, your third start ever at Seacaucus High School, you threw a no-hitter. And uh, did that maybe set the trend for the rest of your career uh, as a high school athlete? Well, it definitely, it definitely gave me a lot of confidence. So I think when I started having that success as a freshman early on, it's, you know, you say to yourself, okay, I'm doing well, and, you know, I belong here. And this is, you know, I'm going to prove myself, and I want to get better and better. So obviously having that early success and throwing a no-hitter, um, you know, it definitely gave me a lot more confidence to feel like I belong there. Yeah. And um, it, that all, did that also make you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm – I'm part of this and this is, you know, I, I can't say it came easy, but you had success right away. And that, I guess that, that, that had to, to help you uh, moving forward, knowing fully well that you could do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, 
it's funny too because obviously the game has changed so much with 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 high school sports and youth baseball. But yeah, you know, I guess I was kind of naive. Like I knew I had the talent, but at the freshman level, I wasn't thinking beyond just you know the day to day as as a freshman kid playing varsity baseball. So I was just taking every day at a time and just happy to be playing baseball and, and to be able to play in the varsity level and succeed. Um, you know that was my focus, just helping out the team win and doing whatever I can on my part just to contribute to it. So, uh, but, you know, it didn't, it didn't really hit me until later on in my high school career. Like, hey, listen, I, I might be able to, you know, and then you start thinking about your future and, hey, listen, I might be able to play beyond high school and college at the professional level. Uh, but as a freshman, you're not really thinking about that yet. No, not at all. No. But um, what was it like when, you, when there was some really, really big sports writer who worked for the Hudson Dispatch gave you the nickname of Big Luke? Or did that happen – did that happen before uh, before some sports writer gave you that name, at least in print? I mean, were you were, did you have you know like people in Little League calling you Big Luke, or were you or did that all start right then and there as a freshman in high school? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've been called Big Luke for so long, I can't remember. I mean, obviously in Little League, I was really big for my age. So, Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure when that all started. I, I I know you were one of the, the first ones, if not the first, one of the ones, the first ones to call me Big Luke. So uh, I want the credit, though, Mark. I want the credit. Hey, you know what? This is your show, Jim. We're gonna give you credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because because then I remember uh, there were a lot of people that didn't know how to say Lukashevitz anywhere yeah. in northern New Jersey, but they certainly knew who Big Luke was. Yeah, and, no, uh, definitely. And that went statewide. They were, you know, like when we sat in an all-state meetings and you started throwing names around, they said, Mark who? And they said, <laughs> well, Big Luke. Oh, we know who he is, you know. So, <laughs> so it was a hell of a lot easier to remember Luke than it was to remember Lukashevitz, that's for sure, you know. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so you had a great career in uh, in high school. Talk a little bit about getting hurt your senior year and not being able to pitch. And and did you like think, all right, maybe this is it? You know, like I, you know, I'm not going to be able to play on the next level. And uh, was you know, did you have? I don't think you. Rem I don't remember you having surgery because you played through your senior year. You just didn't pitch. But were you worried? You, uh, was there a, a, a major concern on your part that you were not going to be able to ever pitch again? Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely uh, disappointing. I mean, going into my senior year, I was you know I was projected to be a pretty high draft pick as a pitcher going into my senior. Year. Obviously, I was extremely excited about that, and you know, I strained my elbow when I was pitching. Fortunately, it wasn't anything serious that required surgery, but it did require some rest. And obviously, you guys know the high school season's not that long, so um, I wasn't able to really pitch much my senior year. I think I only pitched one game, uh, so you know. I, it did, it did scare the scouts away that senior year as far as my high draft status. But, you know, luckily I was, a, I was a good hitter and a good first baseman. So I was still able to play the field and, you know, I was able to hit, I think, 14 home runs and still be an all state player and, and still contribute to the, to the, to the Secaucus High School team winning their division and, and the sectionals. Uh, so we still had a great season. Uh, but I was disappointed, obviously, as, as any kid would and where you had that opportunity to get drafted so high and then getting hurt. You senior and um you know not being able to take advantage of that you know i did get did get drafted by the mets actually out of out of high school a lot of people don't remember that but not i got all, <laughs> yeah i got drafted by the mets out of high school as a first baseman um but i decided to go to college i was fortunate enough i, I got a scholarship i played at oklahoma state and uh, i was able to get my arm back in shape uh as a pitcher and i was able to pitch again so but yeah it was definitely definitely disappointing but uh luckily it, it all turned out all right, so was there any, uh, with the injury, did you lose any velocity when you got back to pitching again? Or because you got older and mature and, and stronger, did you gain velocity when you threw in college? I, I, I definitely gained velocity. I mean, I, I threw hard in high school, and then as my senior year and I got hurt, that velocity obviously, obviously dropped off. But uh, I can did a lot of training and conditioning to, to get myself back up to, to where I was. And honestly, I got to get a lot of credit. And you know you know the Coach Fa, uh, the late uh, Ed, Ed Ford, Ford he, right. he, uh, he helped me a ton to, to, to get me back to where I was. I remember, I still remember till today him bringing me, he's knocking on 
on my door at six o'clock in the morning on Saturday and Sunday and, and telling my parents, Hey, let's go. He's got to get over to Kane stadium and run the stairs. Yeah. Uh, so he, he would make me run the stairs at six o'clock in the morning on the weekends as a, as a 17 year old kid. And, uh, he said, first, we're going to get you in shape and then we're going to get your arm in shape. So, uh, I give him so much credit for helping me not only mentally, but physically getting back into my baseball shape and, and getting me back to where I needed to be. Um, so that was definitely uh, something I'll never forget. All right. Did it help in the fact that your friend and uh, a fellow Sea Caucus guy, uh, Mike Mangello, who made it all the way to AAA in baseball, was like a far protege. Far loved him, and as a matter of fact, he's the one who dra- he had he drafted him for the White Sox. Um, and but you're older than Mangello, right? No, he's older than me. Oh, he he's is older than you. Than you. Okay. Yeah. So, see, I, yep. Again, I lose time time flight. But did it help? <laughs> Uh, did it help in the fact that that the fire helped to develop uh, Mangello and uh, and he moved his way up the ranks and and you were able to do the same th- with the Fah's help? Oh, I, I definitely think so. I mean, you know, the, everybody knows the Fah back then. He had so many, he knew so many people, and he knew so many people in the game of baseball, and uh, he cared so much about the kids too. And you know, for him to take interest in in in, in my ability and, and believing in me, and even after I got hurt, he said, "Hey, you know what? You can do this." He goes, "We just got to get you back where you need to be." And you know, the fact that he took a lot of his own personal time to. Uh, to spend hours and hours over at the field with me to, to get me back into to physical and mental shape. Um, you know, not, not many people will do that. And, you know, like I said, I thank him for that. Yeah. Well, somewhere in the great beyond, he's listening right now and he's going, get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, go, go stretch, go lay out in the outfield and stretch. You know, but he was somebody oh. who I love dearly and I owe a lot to him as well. Um, he, I played 4B baseball for him, and I always asked him, you know, what was it about me that made you want uh, to, to, to play me, to put me on your team? And he goes, I knew, you, I knew you knew how to keep score. So that's the only reason why I got a chance to play for the FAR was because, uh, because I knew how to keep score. So. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you a quick story real quick about Go ahead. Mr. Ford. Um, so I lived about, I lived on the other side of town in Seacock is where Kane Stadium is. So right. it's a couple miles, a couple miles away. And uh, so he said, yeah, I want you to meet me over there for practice at, at six in the morning on Saturdays. And he goes, we're going to start working out. So I get in my car as an 18, 17 year old and I drive over to Kane Stadium and I get there and he's shaking his head and he goes, nah, he goes, you're not ready to work out. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, go home and figure out a different way of transportation. So I <laughs> drive home, <laughs> I get my bicycle, I I drive my bicycle across town to Keene Stadium. I get there, and he shakes his head again, and he goes, "Now nah. he goes, you're still not ready to, to get get serious about it." So as soon as he said that, I said, "Okay, now I know what he means." I drive my bicycle all the way back home across town, and then he wanted you to run. And I ran across town to Kane Stadium, and when I got there, I couldn't breathe. And he said, "Now you're ready to now you're ready to get focused and get yeah, back at it." Yeah, uh, so cool little story I'll never forget. Oh, that 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 sounds definitely like him. So all right. So you went to Oklahoma State. That's big time. That's yep. big time college baseball. All right. What was it like for a, you know a kid from little old Seacaucus to be playing big time college baseball in Oklahoma State? Was it a little awe inspiring? Yeah. Well, first of all, I stuck out like a sore thumb. So here's this kid from Jersey, big tall kid, looks Italian, and he's sitting, he's out there in the Midwest. <laughs> so, That's right. Looks uh, Italian is the is the key, you know. Yeah, so looks, I, Itali- I looks Italian with a long Polish last name. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> so you know, everybody was looking at me like, "What the hell is this guy doing here?" But uh, no, it was it was a great program. I mean, it's you know, big time baseball program. And, and to be honest with you, when I got there, I mean, you know, obviously all the success I had in high school and everything, and you know, when you get there, you're like, "Wow, there's." I mean, every other guy. I mean, I threw you know, I threw in the mid '90s in high school, and you know, when I get to Oklahoma State, well, everybody else throws in the mid '90s too. Right. <laughs> so, so, uh, so when I got there, I'm like, okay, now I, I got to really get my act together and, and start working even harder because, uh, you know, there's a lot of good players out there once you leave Hudson County. A um, lot of great players across the country. So that was that was eye opening, but it was a great experience. And you know that program has has grown. And you know you know Tom Holiday, who's my pitching coach, who now his son is the uh, the head coach over there. Great people and great program. And again, I owe a lot, owe them a lot too for for believing in me and giving me the opportunity. And they had some great players that played at Oklahoma State before 
you got there, correct? I mean, oh, there, yeah. there's some guys that played ma- big time Major League Baseball, right? Yeah, some of the big, obviously, Robin Ventura, yep. Pete Incavilia. So, I mean, on and on, there's a number of great legendary players that have went on and had great careers in the big leagues. Now, you didn't play with those guys, though. They were a little bit, they were, no, also, they're, they were a little bit Jim, older I'm, than you, too, right? Jim, I'm not that old, Jim. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm sorry, Luke, you know? It, should, it said 46 on your bio today. So, uh, again, I'm, I have no idea. Anybody who's below me, I have no idea what their age is. Anybody who's older than me, I know who they are. So, but anybody younger than me, I have no clue. I just, I lose, I lose the time frame. Okay. So you're there at Oklahoma State. You played one year and then you decided, okay, I want to get uh, ready for the major league draft. So you transferred to Brevard Junior College? Yeah. So I, um, you know, obviously my goal out of high school, I wanted to play professional baseball. That was my dream and my goal. Uh, obviously I was excited that I was given that chance in college and, you know, I got my arm back in shape and I said, you know, I, I really want to get drafted. I want, I was so focused on playing professional baseball. I just, I figured it was a good opportunity for me. And, you know, I went down to, you know, Brevard Community College down in Florida, which is some of the best baseball uh, around when it comes to, uh, to junior college baseball. And uh, had a real good year there, you know, my sophomore year. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in the first round and uh, a great organization. And um, so that's that's how that went. And it was uh, a great experience. And I was just fortunate when I got drafted by the Blue Jays in, in 93, I believe they were just coming off a World Series. So yep. a lot of great things happening over there in that program. So it was a, definitely an exciting time. Okay. And then you got – you were one of what they call the sandwich pick right you got drafted um in the first round but you were like somebody else's free agent and you were able to get picked because of that the the free agency is that correct or am i wrong yeah yeah no you're right so the blue jays lost uh, tom hankey who was a pitcher right uh to free agency so when you lose a a player to free agency you get a first round supplemental pick so basically that just means you get an extra first round pick in the draft so uh i was able to i was that pick for for tom hankey um so then, uh, and then right away, you knew you were going to sign because you were first round draft pick. That's, that's, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, without getting it the money, you knew fully well that that was the, the, the smart thing to do was to sign right away, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it was definitely, like I said, that was my goal. I wanted to play professional baseball. So obviously being drafted by the Blue Jays in, in the first round and, uh, you know, it was, it was an easy, it was an easy, easy decision to make. Uh, uh, obviously, they make a lot more money than they do nowadays when right. I see some, some of these bonuses, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's unbelievable. But hey, good for them, I guess. But, uh, you know, it was definitely an exciting time and it was something that I definitely wanted to do. Okay. So then how many years did you send, spend in the, uh, in the Blue Jays organization? And where did they, first of all, let's start. After you signed, where did they send you? My first year, I went right to um, South Atlantic League. Wow, that's, um, a, that's a good step. That's high A. Yeah, so I didn't play rookie ball or, or any of that in the Gulf Coast League. So I was lucky enough. I, I went. I didn't go to the New York Penn League. Uh, so I went right to A ball, which was in the South South Atlantic League in Her- Hagerstown, Maryland. Wow. Okay, Hagerstown so, Sun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, Hagerstown Sun. So, um, you know, the, the South Atlantic League was great. Great competition. Long bus rides. So it was probably one of the leagues with the longest bus rides because you're going from Hagerstown, Maryland to uh, to Savannah, Georgia. You're going to Mobile, Alabama. I mean, you're going to some places from <laughs> a right. lot of long, bus rides. Long bus rides. Yeah. Long bus drives. Uh, Augusta, Georgia. Yep. Um, so it was it was fun though. It was you know, hey, first year you're, you're a kid, you're playing in, in professional baseball, you're happy. So it was. It it was a lot of fun. And were you 20 years old yet? Um, geez, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. I would probably say I was around 20. Yeah, yeah 20. Okay. So, yeah. so here you are. You're 20 years old and you're playing Class A baseball. You got to figure, all right, I'm on the fast track. And unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't the case, right? It took a little while, didn't it? Yeah, no, it took me a while. And it's... Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of that had to play into it, but you know, and also too, the the Toronto Blue Jays in the '90s, they were their minor league system was was incredible. Right. It was stacked with talent. Right. Uh, they just came off back to back World Series, and um, they they were loaded at the big league level. Um, 
So, you know, and then they moved me from a starter to the bullpen. They thought that was the quickest way for me to get to the big leagues. But, you know, I eventually worked my way up the ladder in the minor leagues, and I went to Syracuse. Uh, their AAA team is um, – and I spent four years in Syracuse in AAA and, you know, just the hoping – home. <laughs> And which is now obviously where I live now. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, I spent four years in triple a and, you know, I had some good seasons, but again, at the, at the big league level, they had four veteran left-handers in the bullpen. You know, they had Pedro Babon, Lance Plesak. Uh, um, they had a bunch of guys in the bullpen and, and, you know, I wouldn't go anywhere. Right. <laughs> so, uh, sometimes it's just timing and being in the right place at the right time. Um, and I know my agent was like, Hey, listen, maybe we can trade them or maybe you guys will, you know, but unfortunately for me, and maybe it maybe was a couple of years, I didn't have a chance to get called up. And but you know, again, it was just such a great organization with a lot of talent. Uh, but then the then they took me off the forty man roster in two thousand, and then the Angels picked me up off the uh, off the forty man off of waivers, right. and I went right to, went right to the Angels. You went right to the Angels big league team, right? Yeah, well, I went yeah. to I went to actually I went to spring training to big league camp. And I was actually the last um, cut in spring training uh, in 2001. Okay. And the last day of camp, I was the last guy they cut. And I didn't make the team out of camp. And obviously disappointed because I had a really good spring training. Um, and I went, and I remember we started our season. We and were in Los Then you were comfortable by being a reliever, correct? You were. You, it, it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was a reliever probably the last four years in Syracuse at the and AAA level. a situational level, so. lefty, or or were you a, a long lefty? Um, pretty much a situational lefty. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, once I got to AAA, I mean, I spent four years at AAA being a situational lefty. So at that point, I was very comfortable in that role and having success in it. Uh, you know, my slider was my best pitch, fastball slider. Um, unfortunately, I didn't throw a lot. I mean, as a starter, especially nowadays, you got to have at least four or five solid pitches to be a starter yeah. in the big leagues. Uh, and, and I only had two or three <laughs> solid <laughs> pitches. So, uh, so that's why they felt, hey, his his best role is in the bullpen, throwing that hard slider, hard fastball, uh, and running that sinker down and in. Um, but you know, it's. Um, so yeah, when I when I did get to the Angels, uh, I didn't make the team out of camp, and we were into the minor league season. One league, I, Salt Lake City was their Triple A team, and I think we started out in uh, Las Vegas of all places. Okay. <laughs> so and then we were. And that in must the have been a culture league. shock going from playing uh, <laughs> international league baseball, where it's like legitimate baseball, to like going to the Pacific Coast League, which was like was like playing pinball. You know, the ball was flying all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some stadiums, Colorado Springs. The ball flies out, Salt Lake City. But, you know, I was only – I was down for about a week in the beginning of the season, and then someone got hurt, and then I got – I think it was – I can't remember even who got hurt, but I got called up a week into the minor league season. So I wasn't down there very long, and I did get called up. So um, so I I was just happy about that, making it up to the big leagues. And what was that feeling like, Mark, when you finally got to, like, say you walked into – your, your first major league uh, locker room. You got. You went to walked over to your locker. They uh, they put it. You put a uniform on. You had to check to make sure that the guy who uh, who issued you the locker uh, the uniform spelt your last name right because that would have been really embarrassing. And, well, uh, it was. It was. Yeah. Well, it was funny because. My my major league debut was a little different than maybe most people, but we were in Colorado Springs. That were that's where I was. And now I remember we were in Colorado Springs in, in AAA. We just finished the game. I was sleeping, and I got a phone call at like three in the morning, and it was my coach at the time. And he said, uh, he goes, hey, he goes, you need to be on a plane uh, in four hours. You're going to the big leagues. <laughs> so, that's how you learn. So. Okay. Yeah, so I uh, I had to get on a plane. So I in Colorado Springs, I flew to Atlanta, and then the, the flight got canceled, and it was delays. So the Angels were playing in Detroit at Comerica Park uh, that night. So I had to get to the park. So I figured that's hey, early. I'll get there. But after all the delays and cancellations, I don't get to Detroit. I don't fly in till maybe like ten o'clock at night, nine thirty at night, or whatever it was. So by the time the taxi took me to the field, uh, the game was in like extra innings. I think it was like the 10th, 11th, or 12th inning. And at that point, they ran out of pitching. So uh, the clubhouse guy said, hey, listen, get this uniform on and get out of the bullpen right away. You might be pitching. You're kidding <laughs> so- me. 
<laughs> so, so here I, it is. Uh, you know, you know, you, you, you know, like you're you got you must be exhausted because you've been up since three o'clock in the no. morning packing your bags and to get to get to the major leagues, and then the <laughs> clubhouse guy says, "Here, put this on. You you may play. You may pitch." Yeah, he goes, put your uniform on and sprint down to the bullpen because we have no pitching left and you might be going in the game. Oh, so my I, God. <laughs> I only had about five minutes to soak it all in. So I ran down to the bullpen and, and sure enough, five minutes later, the phone rings and I'm playing catch and getting ready to go in the game. And did um, you? I did. I pitched and I came in and I actually got, there was two outs. I get uh, Jose Marseus uh, from the Tigers. I got him to pop out. So ended the inning and I came back out and Bobby Higginson hits a walk off home run against me and we lose the game. Oh my God. Um, so your so major league debut, you gave up a walk off homer? Walk, walk off home run, my major league debut. Oh so, my God. you know, I, I get back to the hotel and, you know, I, and I got all these people calling me from back home because they're all excited they're, you know, that they heard I got called up. So everybody's calling me and they're like, hey, you know, congratulations for getting called up. And they're like, man, we just saw the home run on SportsCenter. That was a bomb you gave up. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. And were you but, worried at that point, like say, oh, God, I'm here and I just gave up a home. And maybe I'm going back down again. You know, were you, was, there, was there that thought at all or no? No, I mean, I was obviously disappointed because, I mean, that's – you don't want to make your debut and your first appearance like that, giving up a walk-off home run. So I was kind of upset, but, you know, the coaches, they said, hey, don't worry about it, man. You're going to have a lot more opportunities, and it's not a big deal. So it's – you know, but it's just funny the way that all – worked out and going on no sleep all night flying all day and then you know you get to the park and you know you're looking forward to soaking in everything and you know five minutes later you're down the bullpen getting ready to go in the game that is hysterical <laughs> so, all right before we go into further detail about you being with the anaheim angels talk a little bit about your experience in syracuse and correct me if I'm wrong, that's where you met your wife, right? Uh, yeah, I did, yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> I played here for four years in Syracuse, and, uh, you know, I played here long enough, and I was fortunate enough I met my wife here, and, and, and this is where we've called home for the last 20 years. So it's, uh, you know, great place, which has been really good and to me. A, and she's a Syracuse girl from Syracuse? Yep. She's from Syracuse, and I met her here while I was playing, and, um so we've we've been together now for for 19 years 20 years God bless. and uh, but I mean, so that must have been really difficult on your wife's day. and by the way what's your wife's first name it's mary hey, mary okay well, that's not a bad name to have because you know my wife's name mary too see so right. yeah so we 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 got we got a lot in common but um <laughs> Uh, talk a little bit about the, the sacrifice a little bit that Mary had to put up with, with the fact that you now uh, were going to bounce around the country with uh, with uh, the Angels, and you're no longer with the Blue Jays. Yeah, it's you know it's like any other that any other guy that plays in minor league or any professional sports. I mean, it's you know people don't realize the sacrifice and the toll that it takes on their family and all the travel and you know a lot of times you don't get to see your kids and things like that. So you know my my wife at the time found out real quick that lifestyle and you know there was a lot of traveling and you know she spent a lot of time in airports just following me all over the place and okay. uh, so it's sometimes it's not as glamorous as they seem to make it out, but you know we were young and just having fun and just traveling all over playing baseball and it was a it was a lot of a lot of fun like got to see a lot of places with her uh so it was a, it was a great time were you already now did you get married while you were still playing in syracuse or did you uh did you have to wait until that was over no i got we got married when i was playing for the angels so oh with um, the angels okay Yep. So I was already, we were already dating when I got traded to the Angels. I was still playing for Toronto at the time. Uh, so we were already living, we were already living in Syracuse while I was playing here. So I had an apartment here and okay. and then I got traded. And obviously, you know, she, she realized, well, California is a lot further than Syracuse. So uh, we're going to rack up the air miles now. Okay. All right. So talk a little bit about that year uh, and pitching for the Angels. And uh, what was that like? And who was the manager of the Angels at that time? Uh, Mike Sosha. Oh my God! So he he was he, so you got to play for uh, for Sosha. Yeah. He was there forever. Okay. Yeah, I got to play for Mike Sosha. My pitching coach was Buddy Black. Wow. Was now, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So you know him and um, um, actually Joe Madden was my bench coach, who's now the head coach and of the. And now Angels. he's the manager of the, of the Angels. <laughs> yeah. In this small world. So huh? yeah, I mean it's uh, Ron Renicky. Um, you know. Uh, so a lot of great guys that were coaching that team. Mickey Hatcher. Wow. Uh, so a lot of great coaches that were on that team when I was there. 
And then who were some of the who were some of your teammates that you played with with the Angels back then? And that's oh uh, yeah, back then we had uh, Adam Kennedy, uh, Darren Erstad, Troy oh, wow. Gloss, okay. um, Tim Salmon. Okay. Um, so yeah, a lot of lot of great players. Tim Salmon who ended up being AL MVP one year, didn't he? Oh, uh, Erstad? No, I mean, no, uh, no. Uh, Tim Salmon was the AL MVP. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So that was that, and how did you do that year? Did the Angels? Did you compete? Did you? Did you? Were you in uh, an independent race or no? Well, no. In two thousand one, we uh, we didn't have that great of a year, um, and that was that was the last year of Disney owning our team. And then in two thousand in um, uh, two thousand and two is Albert. when. Uh, Artie Marino took over the team, and that's when they changed the uniforms. and And obviously, we went on to win the World Series that year. So, uh, so it was a great, great time to be with the Angels. It was an exciting time, um, just because no one really knew who we were, and no one expected anything from us uh, in 2002. We won that. We, we were able to clinch the wild card, and no one thought we were going to get through the first round. So, uh, <laughs> it was it was fun to be that underdog. Yeah, and that was, and obviously, it must have been a fun time to be out there and, and with the, with the team winning, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's you know, 2002. I, I again, I had a really good spring training going into that season, and you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, okay, am I going to make the team? You know, I was the first cut the year before, the last cut in spring training, and you know, you're getting down to that last day, and you're like, Oof, you know, I, I, I feel like I had a good spring training, and you know, and sure enough, you know, Sosha brings me in, and you know, in that last meeting of the last day, and you're like, oh, geez, here we go again. <laughs> so, you know, he, he brings me into the uh, into his office and says, hey, you know what he goes uh you made the team you earned it and uh, you deserve it so that was that was a special time to to break camp with the team out of spring training and and going on to have a great season to win the world series oh that must have been phenomenal okay so yep. all right so at, at, after the 2002 season did you think at that point you had a at least a, a decent career ahead of you and what happened between 2002 and 2003 yeah, I had, some, I, had, I had arm injuries again. Oh, uh, no, this, really? Is that that happened? Yeah, this time it was my shoulder. had some shoulder problems and lost a lot of velocity on my fastball. And I wasn't able to get that back, uh, unfortunately, and tried to rehab it and, uh, you know, lost a lot of velocity and it showed in my numbers. And, you know, it's... You can't you can't really pitch at the the professional level, the big league level, if you're throwing 88, unless you have great movement on the ball. No. <laughs> uh, so for me, it was a it was a tough situation, and fortunately, I wasn't able to get that velocity back to where it was. And uh, after my third year with the Angels, they didn't renew my contract, okay. and then uh, I actually wound back up with the Toronto Blue Jays. That's correct. Yeah, 2004, you started yep. there. So and- played with them in t- 2004. Uh, continued to have issues with my arm, uh, still wasn't able to, to get my velocity to where it was, and uh, eventually was released by the, the Blue Jays right at the All-Star break. And and believe it or not, I went and played with the Somerset Patriots. That's played the last the, time I talked to you was when I went played, out there. I drove out to Somerset to go see you. Yeah, yeah I played independent baseball and you know waited the end of the season and to see if there was any offers and wasn't a whole lot of interest and then I, at that time you know my wife was pregnant and I said you know I was a pretty good run I've been able to play 12 years professionally and uh you know maybe it's time to, to move on so I decided the best thing was to move on and and that was that so but I have no regrets it was a I had a great time playing great great experience and I was just very fortunate to to play at that level for the years I did okay now Right? Was it right away, Mark? After you decided that you were going to hang it up, that you got into broadcasting, and how did that all? Tra- how did that transpire? Yeah. So as soon as I was done playing, obviously I knew the uh, the GM at the the Syracuse Chiefs, the Triple A team. I knew those guys were playing there for so long. So obviously, when they knew that I was living here, my wife was from here. You know, they asked me. They said, "Hey, you ever you ever be interested in broadcasting?" I said, "Well, I, I've never done it, but I'll shit, I'll give it I'll give it a shot, see what happens." And you know, I was I was able to do the Chiefs games. I did their TV analyst, color analyst games. I did the games on radio, and right. you know, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a part time thing. Obviously, I was working during the day, but I was doing that at night uh so i had a lot of fun did it for a number of years and um once our kids started getting older and 
things get you know things get challenging more responsibilities and things right. with the kids you know i just decided hey listen i just obviously got to focus on on my job but it was really fun doing it for the number of years i did it yeah no you did it a number of years you did it for what about 10 12 years <laughs> Uh, no, the broadcasting I only yeah. did probably like five years. Oh, five years. Okay, because yep. I, I, the funny story about you broadcasting is that I was we I was driving to Cooperstown on a on a on a trip with my wife, and we just happened to turn on uh, Syracuse Chiefs radio game, and I, and I was flipping the channels. And I said, "Boy, that voice sounds familiar," and then I kept <laughs> listening, and I said, I, "I said to my wife, I said, Mary, I think that's I think that's M- Mark Lukashevitz, right?" And she goes. How, do you, how would you know somebody up here that's broadcasting a game in Syracuse, New York? And I said, <laughs> I said, I really think it's him. And right, yep. and then sure enough, as it went to break, I said, Oh, it is. And then that's when I co- called you the next day. I said, I didn't know you were a broadcaster. So you know. <laughs> I didn't know either. Until yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but all right. So then your kids started getting a little older. And what were you doing full time then uh, after you retired from baseball? Uh, I was in sales. I've always been in sales, and uh, you know, it's something that's being a competitive person, an athlete. Uh, I've always done. Uh, I've always been in sales for for a number of years. So, um, just having that competitive nature and that challenge of of getting the sales. So it's uh, what kind, so what it's, kind of sales? What, what, what uh, I, I've I, I've done numerous things: financial sales. Oh, financial. Uh, okay. So, yep. All so, right. but but it's you know now that my kids are older, that's uh, what we're now, gonna get yep. to now. You get, as your kids were getting older, say little league age, uh, yep. did you want to stick your nose into it and say you know what I'd want to be able to coach them much like my father did to me, or did you say hands off because they you said I you know I don't need to have people look at me differently because I I'm a former pro major league baseball player. Yeah, no, it's um you know. I, when I was done playing baseball, I had some opportunities to coach at the, the, the minor league level. I had some teams reach out to me and see if I was interested in coaching, you know, minor league baseball and, you know, obviously loving the game so much. It was something that I was definitely considering. Uh, but my wife just having our first kid and saying, you know what, I really, I've been away for so long. I've lived out of a suitcase for so many years. Uh, I want to just have this opportunity to, to be home and be in one spot and, and watch my kids grow and, and be home for that. Uh, so for me, that was important. And then having the opportunity to coach my kids all through Little League uh, was something I'll never forget. You know, my la- my youngest son, Joey, who's now going to be 13, he just finished his last year of Little League last year. So, but those memories, I'll never forget. Yet. So having that opportunity, like my dad did coaching me and my brothers, and I was able to coach my kids all through Little League, and it was something that I'll never forget. Great experience, and I'm glad I did it. Okay. But um, but I'm talking about when you first started coaching Little League, uh, did people look at you like saying, you know, like, you know, what is this guy doing? You know, like, does he think he knows everything because he played in the big leagues? Or did or did they respect well, you a little bit because, you know, like, or, or I, yeah. yet, did you not try not to say anything about it, the fact that you were a big league ball player? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't say a whole lot, but obviously people knew me from the area, so they all knew I played baseball and they knew my career. So, um, you know, so I think I, I – got that respect from a lot of people just you know with my background so you know I, a lot of people obviously were, were excited for me to to help out with the kids and, and coaching them and you know i enjoyed doing it so i, I think the the, the 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 teams and the kids in the community they i think the parents all loved it okay. uh, to have, have someone be a part of it and help the kids uh with their development all right now um correct me if i'm wrong you have one son that is uh 15 16 years old yeah, my older son Jake is—he uh, just turned fifteen. He's a sophomore in high school, and he uh, is a big boy. <laughs> he is. He—he's—he's yeah. uh, a, he's a very big kid. He definitely is as my genes. So yeah. he's. Uh, He's six five and he's about two twenty five and wow. he's left handed. So and, he's, uh, and he could stroke it, can he? Yeah, he's got a really good bat. He can hit the ball a mile. So he's, he's not a uh, pitcher like a, his old man, though, is he? Uh, he pitches, but he's, he's definitely his hitting and, and playing first base is his position. But he uh, he's definitely got some great ability, um, and he's really you know just in the last year or two being so young, big for his age. And I know I went through this too, but he's just starting now to grow into his body, and it's really fun to watch because now he's able to really implement everything that we're trying to teach him. Because before it's kind of like a baby giraffe where you you want it, your mind's saying to do it, and the body can't catch up with your mind and 
Uh, there's a lot of big moving parts going around. So now it's really nice to see him putting it all together and uh, he's getting more athletic and physical and, uh, but yeah, he's tearing the cover off the ball. I mean, he's a good kid and he's a great kid and he's a smart kid, which I'm really proud of. I mean, he really well, works hard. That means he takes after his mother. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. yeah. But uh, in terms of, um, he's gaining attention too, where he is. I mean, I know he's only 15. He's and he's what a freshman in high school, uh, sophomore. Sophomore. Okay. So is yep. he gaining attention to to possibly be a Division one athlete himself? Uh, I, I, yeah, he is. He's starting to get a lot of attention from college coaches, and you know, he goes. You know, obviously, sports now is totally different. Now there's all travel showcases. ball and showcases and all this stuff. So it's obviously a lot different than we were kids. So I'm still trying to get used to it myself. But yeah, he is definitely. He's getting a lot of attention, and he's getting a lot of colleges starting to pay attention to him and starting to gain interest. So uh, it's exciting to see. And you know, you know, the main thing though, he enjoys playing, uh, and he's doing really well in school, and he. He's, you know, he's going to continue to keep growing and developing. So I think he's got such a high ceiling. If he keeps working hard, uh, you know, I think he'll do really well. All right. And does he play travel? Is that what it is up there, or is it you like we have down here, which is you know, that's, yeah, that's he play. Yeah, he plays. He he plays obviously his high school baseball, but he also plays on a summer travel team, which you know travels all over. You know, they play. You know, they go down to Diamond Nation in New Jersey. They're oh, going no. to Atlanta. okay. Yeah, they're going to Atlanta to play in their perfect game tournaments. So he's going to a lot of big showcases. So he's already um, been invited to go to those big showcases. That's great. Yeah, so that and, you know, he does the you know, the prep baseball report stuff. He does – so he's starting to get into all that stuff. So, okay. um but yeah, it's you know it's it's a lot of baseball. So like I said, I mean when we were in high school, I was playing you know the Bill Better Boys or yep. American Legion. <laughs> so that was that was our travel ball. So that was like exactly said, it. But that was good travel. You went because yeah. I, I played Bill Better Boys too. And when my travel was from Jersey City to Kane Stadium, that was the yeah. that was about as good as it got. But yeah. I didn't have to worry about paying the two thousand dollar league fee. That's all you know. It was oh just, yeah. It's incredible it's, the, it's, the money that's being thrown around in, in travel baseball is ridiculous. It, it's definitely changed. Yes, so no, it's, no, uh, no question. All right, so then Joey is 13? Yeah, my younger son Joey is going to be actually 13 next month. Wow, so, and, and, does uh, he, and he rips it too? It, yeah, he plays baseball, and he's different build than Jake. He's more smaller, but very athletic and just quick. And uh, but yeah, he's a middle infielder, and he's doing really well too. He's, uh, he's a good little player, good uh, hard nosed player. And well, thank uh, God no, somebody he, got the right handed gene in that family. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. And, so, then, and then you have uh, one other child. Or no, just I just got boys? two. Just got two boys. Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, that's good enough. That's that's all you yep. need. You know. <laughs> All right now, is there co competition between the two? Does one say I'm better than you, and then they go back and forth, or is it is it uh, a lot of fun? The two of them are like their best of friends. Yeah, no, they get along really well. I mean, you know, like any other brothers, they'll have their moments every now and then, but um, they're not too competitive against each other. I think just because they're you know two years in difference in age, but uh, but yeah, it's it's just fun. It's just fun watching them play and watching them grow and. Uh, you know, if, you know, like I said, the best thing is they're just they're good kids and um, you know they're good students, and that's what I'm most happy about. Okay, and talk a little bit about the pride that you have in the fact that you got two boys that became baseball players like their old man. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's hey, it's like any other dad's dream, and you know, I, I I'm thrilled that they they enjoy playing the game, and I'm able to share my experience with them. With them. Um, but you know what? Like any other dad, um, sometimes dad doesn't know what he's talking about, and they don't want to hear <laughs> from me. <laughs> so, uh, so sometimes I got to have them being coached by someone else at this point. So, uh, but you know, it's funny. It's you know, and, and I've talked to some other guys I've played with too, and had the same problem. Like, yeah, my son tells me I don't know what I'm talking about. So it's just just kids being a kid. So it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, well, all you have to do if they don't know what you're talking about is show them the clip that you sent to me a, a couple weeks ago when I said. I didn't have any pictures of you, action pictures of you, and you sent me that video, and you threw that slider to somebody, I don't know what his name is, Alex, oh, A-Rod, that's the one, <laughs> and they, you, it was a one-two slider, and you struck him out swinging, that's all they have to do is see that, and they say, hey, well, you know what, my old man was a, was a major yeah. league pitcher, you know? 
Yeah, no, it was pretty cool to have to have those memories to share with them. So, but it's you know, I have some ones I've given up some long home runs, but I won't send you those videos. Yeah, no, no, no. We'll keep them. We'll, <laughs> the one striking out a rod is uh, is impressive, and I think we we touched on it. Um, and how wild is it that there are three major league baseball players from Sea Caucus, and all three is were pitchers, and you know, yeah. like, and mind you, to, you know. A little town like Seacaucus has three guys that made it all the way to the major leagues in Frank McCormick, uh, Jeff Bittiger, and yourself. And, and have three guys that, um, that became not only big, 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 big league baseball, baseball players, but they were pitchers, all three. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, to, like you said, to have that small of a school to be able to, to produce three guys. And like you said, Mike Mangiello, we have, it's, we've had a lot of other guys that were really good. Real and close. We're able to, yeah, real close. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's something in the water over there in the Hackensack River. I don't yeah. know what it is, but in the Meadowlands, but I don't know, but it's, uh, they've been able to produce some, some really good baseball players. And, yeah. uh, you know, coach Falco has done a, he did a great job with that program and a lot of good teams, a lot of good players and some winning seasons. Uh, throughout yep. the years it still is a, a, a baseball hotbed there's no question sea caucus yep. is it, they did do a very good job their little league like we said their little league field is one of the best in the state and uh, and their little league the coaches are phenomenal they just do a phenomenal job of of, of teaching kids the right way uh, and uh, and obviously you must have been blessed to be able to be part of that 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 league in that city because uh a uh, town, no, Seacoggins is a town, um, and uh, just to be able to have that as a background is just—it's got to be phenomenal. To be able to know three guys made it all the way to the big leagues. Yeah, it is great. It's a great town, and it's a town that I love going back and and visiting. And you know, I brought bring my kids sometimes over to the little league field, and you know, they think it's amazing because you know, because uh, that field is so nice. I mean, they did such a beautiful job on that field, and uh, but just all the memories that we've had there as kids, and you know, I just remember playing in little league and playing against Hoboken, you know, in the district championship, and just so many great memories. And I'm still friends with a lot of those guys today uh, from team that I competed against against Little League, you know, Ralph Asubio, uh, Mark Tagliari, uh, okay. Danny Ortiz. I mean, there's so many great players that we've been able to continue to to stay as friends, which is which is kind of special. Well, and those are three guys. Well, well uh, Ralph and Ralph and Danny, I speak to on a pretty regular basis. Danny Ortiz had the best pickoff move in the history of oh, mankind. Uh, it was he, unbelievable. Yeah, I don't, phenomenal. Yeah. Great pitcher, too. Phenomenal pitcher. Great pitcher. He just never, you know, he signed with the Texas Rangers and just, he just wasn't comfortable being away. He didn't, he wasn't mature enough to handle yeah. uh, being away. And that's the bad thing. Ralph Eusebio played, uh, played in the Cubs organization and he made it all the way to single A. His little brother, Michael, Made it all the way to Double A with the Cincinnati Reds as a pitcher of all things. He was a second yeah. baseman his entire life. So, yeah, there's a great, great baseball that comes out of uh, out of this county, and and a lot of them, like you said, oh, a great debt of dat- a great debt of grat- gratitude to our mutual friend, uh, the late great Ed Ford, because he was uh, he 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 put everybody. You mentioned all those names, all of them: Zaglieri, Ortiz. You said, yo, they all all uh, were tutored by the fog growing up. So, sure. all right, we've got a couple minutes left, and here's what I want you to do: rapid fire, okay? Okay. Uh, and and going by uh, major major league uh, distances, okay? Who's the best player you faced in your major league career? Ichiro. Okay. Suzuki. Just couldn't get him out. Uh, actually, I had success getting him out. Um, believe it or not, for some reason, he didn't like my slider. Okay. Uh, so I, I was able to get him out, but just the fact that watching someone that ha- had five, five tool player that can do everything, he can run, he can hit, he can throw, he can do it all. Yep. Uh, I would say it was probably between him and Roberto Alomar were two of the guys where just, he, they were just playing on a different level. Okay, good. Best teammate you ever played with? Oof, that's a tough one. Cause I played with so many great guys. I right, named uh, three, three guys that you've <laughs> Three guys that were just great teammates. They didn't have to be great players, just guys, uh, and and maybe that you're still friends with today. Uh, I would say Darren Erstad was a great guy. Uh, he was our center fielder with the Angels. Um, just a down to earth guy. I mean, he treated everybody the same. Yep. Um, and a hell of a punter. 
Yeah, hell of a punter. Yeah, yeah. all-American punter in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great player. And he actually coached at Nebraska for a number of years. Yes, he did, program. yeah. Um, uh, Dennis Cook, actually. I don't even remember the Dennis oh, Cook. Oh, of course. Pitcher for the he Mets was a lefty, pitcher, lefty relief pitcher for the Mets. He was. Yeah, so he kind of brought me in as when I my first year with the Angels, he was in our bullpen. And obviously being a veteran lefty, I tried to pick his brain as much as possible. And But he was a great guy that really – taught me the game how to play the game at that high level and, and really took me in and, and ta- taught me a lot about the game okay uh, so yeah that, that was another one and just oh geez i don't know i mean you're really getting me <laughs> all right well that's, well that's good we can leave it leave it there uh how about uh best city that you you love to go to when you're on the road either in a, either in the big leagues or triple a um well, I would say I really liked playing in Seattle. Okay. Uh, I really loved the stadium and the city. Uh, obviously, I loved playing at Fenway, so that was a lot of fun playing at Boston. And, you know, and obviously being from Jersey and playing at Yankee Stadium was one of my highlights, so I, I really enjoyed playing there. But, you know, believe it or not, there's so many great minor league fields and minor league cities. Sure. Uh, and I think I've played in every one of them being in the minor <laughs> league for so long. But, uh, but, you know, playing in Salt Lake City and, and Memphis has, is a great place to play. And yep. there's just so many great minor league towns. Um, and now with all these new stadiums, there's just so many great places. Yeah, and unfortunately, they're looking to condense 42 minor league uh, franchises, which I really can't see how, how they could do that. That'll be how many people who depend upon those teams for uh, summer entertainment, and they're going to eliminate those franchises is really, really sad. So Yeah, it really is. I mean, we have one up here, the Auburn Double Days, which has been around forever, and that's one that they're talking that might be affected by that. So yeah. really hope it doesn't happen. I hope so, too. And then you just mentioned about playing in New York. I got We got we to share the, the memory. Um, when you first got called up to the big leagues, I guess that's what, 2001? 2000? Yep. Okay, 2001. 2001. I yep. called the Anaheim Angels and told them that I said I wanted to be able to come and, and interview Mark Lukashevitz. I've known him for, you know, since he was a young kid, and I wanted to interview him. And you got wind that, that I was coming. And I, as, I, as soon as I walked out of the, out of the, run, the, uh, the walkway out to Yankee Stadium and I got out to the field, I looked over to the Angels' dugout, then the whole thing was empty except who was sitting there waiting for me, you. And that yeah. doesn't happen often where you have somebody sitting and waiting for uh, for a sports writer to come. Usually you want to hide from them, but you were sitting there <laughs> waiting for me to come. So that's a that's an absolute great memory for me. Um, you sitting there waiting for me to come into the into the uh, the Yankee the dugout at Yankee Stadium. Okay, worst ballpark you ever played in? Um, oof. um I would say definitely the Tampa Bay Rays Stadium. Yep. That's what everybody uh, says. Everybody. <laughs> That's without a question. I yeah. mean, it's, um, you know, I, I know they've done well since then, but back when I was playing, they weren't very good of a team, so nobody come to the games. Uh, and just that stadium just being an indoors, it doesn't really, you don't get that feel of a baseball stadium. No, so. not at all. No, it's you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're dead on. They're dead on. It's, it's a really good place for spring training. It's a horrible place for a Major League Baseball team. And, uh there's all the talk of it going, um, taking taking that team and going to Montreal, and how great it would be for the city of Montreal to bring back yeah. Major, Major League Baseball. Well, so we have to we have to see there. Okay, um, if there's one thing, Mark, other than uh, obviously you probably would have liked to have a longer Major League career than just two years, but um, if there's one thing that you regret about uh, being a ball player, was it was it getting hurt? Was it like if do you realize you sit there and wonder? what life would have been like if you didn't get hurt the two times you did? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I I would have loved to have a longer career in the the major leagues, but, you know, so that was obviously not being healthy to be able to do that so that was something but you know you said so you can't control some things but i was i look at it as hey, i was very fortunate to, to be able to play that game for that many years 12 years you know minor leagues big leagues i mean it's it's something that most people don't get a chance to do so i was very fortunate to do it for as long as i did and you know i was able to play in the big league for a number of years and be able to be on a world series team so i really can't complain i mean it's been very the game has been very good to me and um you know i'm lucky now that I'm able to give back and teach a lot of kids uh, the game that I love. Um, so when it comes to regrets, I mean, 
not really. I okay. mean, at least just to just being injured and maybe have the chance to maybe to extend my career a little bit longer than it was. That's probably the one thing that I was thinking of as well. So, yeah. Hey, Mark, this was an absolute great trip down memory lane. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. <clears throat> I wish you the best of luck with your, with your boys. And I hope I can get to see you somewhere down the road. And uh, But again, they, they, there are a lot of people in Sea Caucus that will never forget you, and they still love you dearly. And like I said, when, I was, uh, when this was discussed, that you were going to be uh, one of my guests, they, they, you know, the phone was ringing off the hook. When is the Lucas Shevitz podcast going on? So, you know, so come Wednesday, it'll be up and everybody will want to hear it. And, uh, and again, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and, uh, and best of luck to you and your family and your boys. And I hope to Jim, I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, I, I, you know, you, you, I've known you for a long time. You've always been very nice to me. And, uh, like I said, it's been, it was such a great time back then playing baseball in, in Hudson County and little league all through high school. And, you know, Memories that I'll never forget, and uh, it's great to, to come back to see Caucus and, and talk to some of those people and, and share those memories and, and just, you know, like you said, walk down memory lane. So it's uh, got to be a lot to, to be thankful for, and I, I appreciate you taking time to talk with me as well. No problem. Mark, great talking to you, and next, we'll have another special guest on the Hudson County Sports Podcast next week. Thanks so very much for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. You got it. Mark, don't hang up. Nope. Don't hang okay. up. Don't hang up.